of course, I do have quite a few tools here for fly tying, mm -hmm. but there is also something I like very much. I treasure one mm -hmm. sample of each mm -hmm. pattern that I've been tying. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, for instance, if we take that one, this is about salmon fishing. So yeah. I made a lot of study about using CDC for salmon, mm -hmm. and in all those different patterns, only four of them are now in production. This so is those the steps one, two, three, four. Yeah. So, Mark, how did you get into fishing? Kind of story which is long. It's okay. pretty much like the Robert Redford movie. Uh, okay. This is very often a question of parents, but this is my grand grandmother. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which uh, showed me how to fish when I was a kid. I was about uh, uh, four years old. Uh -huh. And this is this woman who okay. teach me how mm -hmm. to catch a small mm -hmm. white fish. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've been fishing all the time. Uh, but the main man is my grandfather. My grandfather is this man. And he teach me how to fish spinners and so on, yeah. and floats. Yeah. And I start fly fishing also with this man, with the cane rod. Oh, OK. But let me show you another nice picture. This is a, a nice picture with, with nearly all the family. So you see my grand-grandmother here. Mm -hmm. And I'm here. I'm a prob <laughs> probably uh, four years old. Yes. And actually, the table you see on the picture yeah. is the one we are on. Is this one? This one. Oh, nice. <laughs> so when did you start fly fishing then? So fly fishing, this is uh, my grandfather. And mm -hmm. he took me first fishing with live flies. So mm -hmm. we were used yeah. to a very long pole, like, yeah. you know, five meters and a short uh, a liter. Mm -hmm. And we were collecting the big mayfly mm -hmm. and putting them on a hook and going like this, mm -hmm. tapping. Mm -hmm. That was very complicated and very hard. <laughs> I did okay. not have a lot of success, uh -huh. uh, I must say, with that. And then we start really fly fishing with the cane rod. And uh, I was about like uh, 12 years old. Okay. And, uh, but I have been very interesting about spinning fishing. That was much easier for us at this time. Mm -hmm. So I, I quit fly fishing for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And I start again fly fishing when I was 22, 23 with a friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to Switzerland, and that was okay. uh, I was about thirty. Mm -hmm. And as you know, in Switzerland we have a lot of uh, nice places. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of mountains, mm -hmm. so a lot of snow, a lot of water, a lot of nice creek. Mm -hmm. By the way, here in Fribourg, yeah. I've got nearly eleven opportunities to go fly fishing in less than an hour drive. Oh, mm -hmm. so that's good. And and of course, after a certain period of uh, fishing, you. Mm -hmm. Uh, ask how do we do the fly mm, yeah. <laughs> and I get into fly tying at this time. Let me show you some of my first uh, experience about fly tying. Mm -hmm. Here this is what I, uh, I was doing at the very beginning, very classical pattern you can see with the round classical yeah. ackle. But I was already upset at this time by the question of the flotation. Yeah, okay. And uh, on some of those, you can see that the body mm -hmm. is not done with ackle or thread or yeah. whatever, but already with foam. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was really upset about the question <laughs> of the flotation. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, that's it. That's the way I started. So when did you then get in touch with CDC? Uh, the CDC, this is another story, because uh, um, a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. which uh, was not able to see very well, mm -hmm. far away, mm -hmm. uh, told me about CDC. And this guy is Bruno Devec, uh, a very well-known family here in Fribourg, mm -hmm. and a good fly fisherman. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, why don't you make uh, for me uh, a fly mm -hmm. which floats very well mm -hmm. and that I can see mm -hmm. in whatever condition? Mm -hmm. And I was very proud to, to, to be invited to tie flies for someone else. Yeah, yeah. So I take it very, very seriously. And uh, I start to get the CDC I was able to catch at this time. Mm -hmm. And that was not good quality, by the way. Mm -hmm. And I start to, to tie flies. Mm -hmm. So I start the first CDC very classical way. Okay. Meaning a, a round cylindrical ackle, yeah. like the old first uh, mouche developed that we will probably talk later. Okay. 
And, um, but I was not happy because nothing new. It mm -hmm. was not really floating any better. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly I discovered the idea of using the full feather to make the body. Okay. And uh, by doing that, mm -hmm. the hook is floating, so mm -hmm. it's just perfect. And um, another f uh, funny story uh, mm -hmm. is uh, when I, um, uh, I was fishing, I was very proud of me because I was fishing better and better with those mm -hmm. CDC uh, mm -hmm. uh, flies. So one time I remember I went fishing with a couple of friends mm -hmm. and I got an headache. I stopped uh, f for, for a period of time mm -hmm. and have a, a nap on, yeah. the, on the side and give my box with a sample of CDC flies to my friends mm -hmm. and let them go and test them. Mm -hmm. And when, uh, when they came back, they wake me up and you know what they say? Mm -hmm. They said, Mark, you are not fishing better, but your fly does. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of sweet sour. <laughs> uh, but in a way, I was, I was proud that the, the flies was fishing better. Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, and, and that's from here that I decide to, to do something with this idea. Oh. These are those flies oh, I'm nice. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So this, this is CDC and uh, and a couple of wings. Yeah. And who actually brought CDC into fly tying? I mean, who, when was it invented that it is kind of material for fly tying? I mean, a, a lot of people think this is very recent. We are talking about 50 years maximum yeah. uh, from now. But no, it's, it's nearly 80 or okay. 90 years. Yeah. And those flies have been tied very close to where I live, mm -hmm. about an hour drive. And this is in the, the region of Jura, between French border and Swiss border. Yeah. At two places. The first one is uh, Courfèvre mm -hmm. in Jura, mm -hmm. and the other one is uh, Valorbe. Okay. So uh, I got here some, some very old pattern. Let me show you. Um, <laughs> Actually, we have here uh, Maximilien José. This is unfortunately the only picture I've got from this guy. Okay. And uh, this guy created the Moustique du Jura. Uh, okay. This is the first one. Mm -hmm. And this is in the year 1920. And another very important guy is uh, Charles Bickel. Mm -hmm. And you can see him fishing now yeah. on the River Orbe. Mm -hmm. And this is also the same, uh, the same period of time. Mm -hmm. uh, I do not know the real guy who created the first uh, yeah. uh, CDC fly. Yeah. I mean, who introduces uh, CDC in fly tying. Mm -hmm. The only two guys I know is those two. And mm -hmm. this is the one who uh, manufactured, who starts to make series of CDC. This is the, the Mouche de Valorbe. Yeah. It's pretty much the same as uh, the other guy, yeah. except that that one doesn't have any tail. Mm -hmm. And all of them are CDC. And you see, this is Bikel, Charles Bikel. But he was not doing only those patterns. He was also doing kind of pattern like this, which is kind of a more traditional English pattern. Yes. As you say here, yeah. it's a... Mouche anglaise. Yeah. Uh, this is actually soft ackle here. And he was doing that. He had uh, like five girls tying flies for him okay. in, in, in Valor. Ah, okay. Kind of thing like this. Very, very popular at this time. But as you see, everything was were based on round, I mean, kind of call right. Mm -hmm very traditional English style. And the Moustique du Jura, this is uh, uh, this guy, uh, Maximilien José. And I, I got some of the original ones. Wow, okay. Which is uh, <laughs> those. They are not in good shape. Probably they have been used already. Those. Okay. Yeah. But this is the real one, which has been tied by this guy. How does that come from, from those guys to yes. now? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, uh, because of that guy. In fact, Maximilien José teach Louis Veya yeah. how to do that. Okay. And this guy, Louis Veya, mm -hmm. 
made the moustique du Jura in huge quantity. He was selling a lot of them. Okay. And they were sold all around Switzerland. And you see, this is the body is made out of, uh, of raffia. Mm -hmm. It's a very little uh, light amount of CDC. Yeah. Uh, but uh, those patterns got a tail mm -hmm. when uh, Mouche de Valorbe doesn't have any. Yes. So it's see. floating totally differently. Yeah. In 96, yeah. if, I re if I remember well, I said we should one time meet together mm -hmm. and uh, share our knowledge because mm -hmm. this guy got a very specific uh, technique mm -hmm. and this guy is Gerhard Leble, a second guy very important at fly tying yeah. CDC yeah. and this of course a very well-known guy from Slovenia, Marian mm -hmm. Fratnik, mm -hmm. who created the F-Fly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we made this meeting and at this time I just uh, make a, a very nice frame. So this is the frame of each specific Fratnik, pattern yeah, yeah, of Fratnik, yeah. Veja, Gerhard Leble and myself. Yeah. And that was, yeah, in, in 96. Yeah. There is four frames nice. like this. Very nice. Oh, maybe I show you my first, my first series of CDC. Look at that. Mm -hmm. So this is the official... This is the first area I have okay. been selling. Oh, they still exist, all of all, them. All of them. Yeah. <laughs> we are nearly 30 years later and they are still all on duty, I would say. Yes. I mean, the insect doesn't change really. No. So uh, <laughs> if the fly works, why not keeping uh, using them? Yes. Oh, there is one more thing I want to show you, the book. Okay. A very interesting book. Uh, this book is uh, a book from uh, Jean-Paul Picanio, a French guy, mm -hmm. and this is uh, in the year 70s. And he start to, to talk about the famous uh, Mouche de Valor. You mm -hmm. see here, yes. the yeah. Mouche de Valor, and this is a description, and, and uh, he used also the term of cul de canard, yeah. but something which is quite important. Yeah. The name of cul de canard is a, a registered name mm -hmm. by Le Sorcier de Vesoul, mm -hmm. Henri Bresson, uh -huh. which is a French guy. Yeah. And when I started to, uh, to, to do my business, mm -hmm. I didn't want to interfere by using that term. Yeah. So I called this uh, guy, he mm. was already pretty old, yeah. and I said, may I use the name of Croupion de Canard mm -hmm. instead of Cul de Canard? Yeah. And uh, he explained to me that he did not invent it Cul de Canard, he just okay. registered the name Cul yeah. de Canard yeah. and uh, he confirmed that the first Cul de Canard uh, flies has been done by the Swiss guys ah, okay. uh, like the Mouche de Valor. Ah, okay. This is the place where Bikel has been fishing and uh, yeah, beautiful. living for years and years. And uh, that was in the year 1920. It's kind of a magic place here. And Absolutely. There's a lot of fish in this river. Yeah, you have seen some uh, yeah, fish rising active. here. Yeah, they're very active in the moment. Actually, he passed away, he was uh, 55, and that was in the year 1945. Very early. And um, his, his father was coming from Germany, uh -huh. and his father's name was uh, Oskar Bikel. Oskar. Okay. And as you see here in the picture, he, when he was fishing, he was fishing with a very famous automatic reel. So the one you can yeah. pull out and uh, yeah. it comes in automatically with a spring. Yeah. Uh -huh.
a very famous company, yeah. uh, UMV, yeah. uh, and in that factory they are making the very famous file. Ah, and okay. uh, now, I mean, after so many years, they are so famous yeah. that uh, when we are talking in a, in a factory about uh, one of those tools, we mm -hmm. do not say uh, file, but mm -hmm. they, could you give me a valorb? So it's, <laughs> it's, it's even a name, oh, more than just a tool. Yeah. There is one thing quite interesting on that picture is those uh, wood cases, wood boxes that you have here. Okay, yeah. And actually they were used to um, collect the fish during the, the day. So uh, people fishing got one uh, specific box and they were putting their fish inside. They, they were a locker. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty unique. I haven't seen that very often in other countries. No, me neither. So, uh, yes, why see not that? tying a couple of them? Yeah. So you will see how, how do we do oh, to yeah. have a very nice, yeah. round, cylindrical atoll. So, now let's go. I will show you one of each major pattern which mm -hmm. has been uh, done uh, during those uh, 80 years. Okay. So I'm going to tie now the Moustique du Jura. This is the one which has been tied in Courfeuve by Maximilien José. Mm -hmm. For that, I will use a little bit of thread first, and then we'll use uh, some uh, chicken knuckle to make the tail. I prefer to use the uh, Coq de Leon Pardo. This is a nice spotted knuckle. Mm -hmm. So for that, I will take some fibers that here together, and we will use that for the tail. Now something very important for the body at mm -hmm. this time we did not have a lot of synthetic material dubbing or whatever mm -hmm. that was very basic all what mm -hmm. you could find wool silk mm -hmm. and raffia okay. and uh, the raffia was very popular because you see it's a shiny material and this is very nice to create the illusion of the kitin of yeah. the body of the insects uh, it's called as well swiss straw so you cut a small section like this, then you open it because it's too much to make the body and you use only one thin section like this. Start to tie it by the, the end first. You go up to you are going to end the body and then you wrap around. Be careful not to touch the point of the hook because yeah. this is a kind of fragile material and you can break it easily. When you reach this position, you just finished. A few wraps, a few wraps of thread to secure, and then you just cut the excess. Now we'll use uh, a CDC. Yes. And uh, I will use the CDC very much like the, the English tradition of wet fly, meaning that I will ackle the CDC. Uh -huh. This is the main difference between those different type of uh, flies. So trim the excess, use your plier and then grab it by the large extremity. It's kind of delicate because uh, the tip is very thin mm -hmm. and the butt is very big. So yeah. at the very beginning you have to be very delicate when you do the wraps like this and then it's kind of okay to do it like this but when you reach the end it's more and more complicated because it's very thick and dense so you have to be very careful you make like four or five turns it's enough one wrap to secure and few wraps to secure the thread on front now you use your scissors and cut the extremity here Mm -hmm. And then your finisher, very simple. A couple of wraps, another one, like this, and then we are done. You know, you have long and short fibers all around. Yeah. 
By the way, there is a good reason why you have long and short fibers, because it's not a feather which is like the chicken. Yeah. The chicken got exactly the same, same length. Same length. Yeah. 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 But the CDC are totally different. If you take a CDC feather like this, mm -hmm. you will have some barbs with long short long. So why that? Because the, the ducks, yeah. when they collect the oil on the back, they use the beak. Uh -huh, okay. And so they, in fact, uh, damage the yeah, feather, yeah. which means that the fibers are not the same length. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's the reason uh, it's not very regular. Now you remember on the sample I just showed you earlier, it's kind of very nicely round. So how do they do that? They do not cut like this mm -hmm. to make it, otherwise it will never be round. Mm -hmm. It will look probably more like a potato shape, but yeah. not a very nice cylindrical shape. So the trick is very simple. You put all the barbs popping in front and then one cut and here everything got the uh -huh. same length. Uh -huh. It's extremely easy. Yeah. So this is for me the one of the most important pattern because this is the first time in fly tying that we use a CDC. Yeah, okay. So the question could be why that fly has not been known mm -hmm. uh, very quickly. It has been known very locally around Swiss and French border for years and years and uh, uh, you, you, you do not have any record of that uh, yes, in okay. England, in the yeah. States, yeah. until we reach the, uh, what, uh, 60s. Um, I would say most probably the reason is when you catch a fish with that fly, uh -huh. um, because of the mucus of the fish, it will be very hard to get it dry again. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, it's not kind of friendly. People don't want to change the fly. Yeah. So I think this is the reason why it has not been uh, very popular everywhere. Okay. But anyway, it's a very, very good fly. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you catch a lot of fish with it. Mm -hmm. so Looks beautiful. Very simple. Yeah. So now I'm going to show you how to tie the F fly. The F fly, F stands for Fratnik, Marian Fratnik. This guy is born in uh, Slovenia. He unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, uh, but I, I known him very well. Uh, his parents got uh, the river, the famous river Socha, you know, the, that yeah. big, long, yeah. light blue river. And uh, his famous pattern has been published the first time in 1982, and it's a very, very basic pattern. He didn't use anything special to make the body, only the thread to break the color of the hook. Mm -hmm. So it's um, kind of back and forth with the thread. So then the hook color disappear under the wrap of the thread. For the wings, it's very simple. To use this small CDC, yeah. which is the CDC coming of a small dock named Kaki Campbell. It's a very, very small dock. Mm -hmm. That's the reason you have small feathers like this. And the way he used them, it's very simple. He put one feather like this, another one on top, line up by the tip here, mm -hmm. and use that as wings. So like this, you adjust the length, and once you've got the right length, yeah. couple of wraps, couple of wraps under the butt of the feather, and it's almost done. Cut the excess, then use the finisher to make the head, and you are done. <laughs> so it's a very quick pattern, and very efficient. 
cut it here but I mean I've been using this pattern for uh, imitating caddies and uh, also yeah. plecoptera yeah. Uh, but for me as you see the body is pretty slim mm -hmm. so it imitates more the body of those what we call in English the needle fly mm -hmm. which is due to the name yeah, very very thin. very thin body but uh, actually I've been fishing that uh, instead of sedge of caddies flies and uh, the, the fish doesn't really care mm. And I like it because it's really, what, half a minute fly? Yes. And this is the first time that someone is using this fabulous material to do something different. Yeah, okay. So thank you, Marianne. <laughs> Now there is a very interesting guy. Oh. This is Gerhard Leible, oh. you know, the German guy. So this is the first time there is someone who decide to use the CDC, but only the barbs and to get rid of the stem. And he create kind of similar clip like this and grab the fibers and incorporate that into a dubbing loop. Uh -huh, okay. So that was also a very important step in yeah. all the different techniques. I'm not going to describe it right now. I will switch immediately on the one I did a few years later yeah. in the year 1985. So this is a, a very uh, interesting use of the CDC mm -hmm. because the first thing we have to consider is to have this hook floating. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have been using some foam, some a lot of different things, but it's mm -hmm. not really floating properly. And uh, I got the idea of uh, doing the body out of the CDC because that, you know, that feather floats very well. If you, yeah. if you do that, <laughs> see how heavy it is. It's nearly nothing. So you can imagine this is a fabulous material. On, on top of that, you have a lot of barbs on mm. the barbule. And when they touch the water with the density of the water, it stand on the water itself. Mm -hmm. And I got uh, finally the idea of using the CDC for doing the body and using the full feather. So you use it by the tip and then you grab ackle plier to get the large section of the feather, train the excess and here, watch, you just twist and wrap around the hook shape. Twist and wrap, twist and wrap. Keep a small amount yeah. that you will use for doing the thorax. And then, if you want the fly to float very low on the water, do not hesitate to trim off everything which cannot be incorporated when you are doing the twisting. Mm -hmm. And you see, you have a nice very segmented nice. body. And I would say pretty much the right proportion as far as diameter and length mm -hmm. is compared to the nature. Mm -hmm. So now another trick. At this time, I did not yet invent the magic tool. Mm -hmm. We are talking about uh, 30 years ago. Yeah. So the way I was collecting the fibers from uh, the stem is kind of simple when you watch it, but it's not very easy. So you first put the barbs 90 degrees from the stem and you collect the little portion here, here and here. You return it the other way around and do exactly the same. Uh -huh. It looks almost even yeah. and that is very complicated, especially if you want to add another uh, amount from a second feather like I'm doing now. So when you have everything like this, you just collect them together, 
you trim a little bit to have everything nicely lined up and you are using that to make the wings. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then on the front you rest your bobbin holder, trim the excess and with the remaining section of the feather you are going to make the thorax. Uh -huh. It's kind of tricky because you do not have a lot of material left when you are doing that. Only the end of the feather. So a few wraps, trim the excess and use your finisher. Personally, I like very much to do two whip finish knot. It's uh, kind of stronger. So now we still have one problem. It's the length mm -hmm. for the same reason as uh, the other uh, pattern. So do not hesitate to trim and adjust everything and cut in one run the length. And this is the first caddis. Yeah, see. Full CDC, body and wings. Very nice. And based on this one, I would say I started immediately to create also a different pattern. Yeah. Like the other major insect, uh, the mayfly. So let me show you the, the mayfly. For that, I've been using uh, Hong Luke hook shank and uh, tying thread, like beginning of the curve, come back. And once again, this nice Coq de Leonpardo for the yeah. tail. Yeah. I mean, those nice uh, feathers are very important when uh, you are underwater in the mm -hmm. same uh, element as the fish. On top, on a quick water, I think it's more for me mm -hmm. than for the fish. Yeah. Okay. Now what I'd like to use uh, is a, a feather like this and as you see here what is very different from a regular chicken ankle yeah. is the conicity of the stem. It's yeah. very very big conicity compared yeah. to chicken ankle. I will use that for giving the illusion of a conical body shape which is the case of the natural insects. Mm -hmm. So try to tie it first by the tip and then I will use the natural conicity of the stem by being very regular when I twist and wrap, twist and wrap. So you start almost flat first and then twist and wrap, twist and wrap, twist and wrap. And as the feather is increasing, I mean the stem is increasing, the body will be bigger and bigger. And this is going to give the illusion of a nice conical body shape. When you want to do that with a traditional uh, dubbing, it's almost impossible to be perfectly conical. Yes, but for that, it's very easy because uh, it's a natural conicity provided by the stem. Look at that. It's yeah. perfectly conical Very nice. yeah. and uh, segmented. Mm. So you do not need to use anything else. So now what do we have to do? Mm -hmm. The wings. Mm -hmm. But what is very important at that point is if I finish the fly and I just drop that on the water, mm -hmm. the hook float. Mm -hmm. So this is very important because whatever I will use after is not needed in the flotation of the, yeah. of the fly. So I can create the shape I want, the size, mm -hmm. the volume, no problem. So I'm free to do whatever I want. For that, I will use a little bit of floss, which I will use to split the wings. Okay. So I just do one, two, three turn. And then put those fibers here and I leave them on the back and I will use them later. Now, to finish the thorax, I will use a second feather that I will put here. Mm -hmm. 
And now the wings. For that, let's see. Yeah, that color blue then will be kind of nice for that. So, same technique. Put yeah. the bob 90 degrees from the stem. Get rid of the very beginning, not so friendly to tie with. Repeat the same procedure on the second feather. Mm -hmm. And then collect the bobs. It's just a little bit complicated for the first 20,000 and after it's okay. <laughs> No, but what I want to say, it's it's not very easy. Mm. So do not be desperate when you do that the first time. Right. It will not come out that well. So repeat it and after, mm. two, I don't know, maybe four or five, it's okay. So you tie the two wings in one run, like kind of strong, and then use your plier to grab the second feather and then you just twist the feather lift the material go one time on the back a second one on the back again mm -hmm. and as you will see the the fibers for the wing intend to stand up mm -hmm. and then you can go on the front and do the the end of the thorax Now you use your scissors to trim the excess. You are almost done. If it is the first time you are doing this, probably the best is to secure by a, a first knot so you mm -hmm. are free, nothing can be damaging the, the result. And now you split the amount to divide the wings in two. And then you finish mm -hmm. on the front by a uh, few wraps. Once again, few wraps to secure under the floss, trim off, and then secure by the web finish knot. The job is not yet finished. Now we have to adjust the length. So for that, you just grab the two wings, cut it. And as the natural shape mm -hmm. of the insect yeah. is a, a little bit like this and not like it is now, do not hesitate to shape the, the wing. And here Beautiful. the work is done. I like pretty much this style because yeah. you have the three major element, mm -hmm. which is the tail, conical body, two wings, which looks pretty similar to the to the natural insect. And on top of that, what I like very much when you're fishing those flies is when you are casting, mm -hmm. the wings intend to go like this on the body, yeah. and at the end of your cast, pop, mm -hmm. and the fly is just coming onto the surface, mm -hmm. but not like a stone, you know, just yeah. like a parachute. And it is kind of soft. So tell me about your magic tool. This is a very good tool. 
Uh, I wish I would have invented that 20 years ago, but okay. unfortunately it's only 10 years. <laughs> this is this tool. Um, the IDAs, as you remember, um, and you probably tried that already, it's not really a piece of cake to do this kind yeah. of uh, collecting fibers. Yes. So I got the idea of collecting the fibers on both sides of one or two or three feathers mm -hmm. in only one operation. Mm -hmm. So maybe I show you uh, first a very basic pattern, which I call a basic caddis uh, using this. So the first thing, you use uh, your tying thread. So you leave it for a while and let me collect uh, a couple of feathers, maybe one, two, three, like this, and another one here. Do not hesitate to change the color. That sometimes is very good because, you know, in, in nature, you do not have plain colors. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very often we are limited when you are tying to use only one feather color. But if you uh, got into a microscope and, and you see the color, it's yeah. always, always a lot of different spot of different colors together. Yeah. So that's the reason it's quite interesting also to mix color. The idea of the magic tool is very simple. You put the bobs 90 degrees from the stem, mm -hmm. you get the read of the very beginning not, not too nice to tie with, and then you repeat the same sequence on the other two or three feathers you'd like to use. Mm -hmm. When you've got that, what you do is very simple. You choose the table clip which is the most appropriated to the length of the feather. You put the smallest feather on the bottom and the other one on top and in the same kind of natural curve. And then the only thing you have to do is to pull on the stems to push in like this. Okay. And as you see, both sides of the feathers get together. Yes. Now it's kind of easy to trim the excess on both sides and then you transfer onto the regular clip. Mm -hmm. And as you see now, you have the stems lined up so that's easy to trim them off at once. And as you see, the waist is nearly nothing. Mm -hmm. So what do we do with that? Simple. You just flat the thread, you split the thread in two and then you can incorporate the echo substitute that way. And first, you spin a little bit in your fingers. Mm -hmm. And then you take 10 centimeters out of the bobbin and you spin the bobbin. When you got enough twist, you just forward the twist where you need them. You rewind in the bobbin. And when you are back, you can release, mm -hmm. you go on the back, quickly on the front, and you invite the fibers to go backwards to create the caddy swing shape. And you are almost done. So this is a very quick pattern, which I like very much, because yeah. you use different colors. The right amount of material you, you'd like, depending on the size of the uh, flies you are tying, so it's kind of nice and quick, yeah, of course. Very quick. Once again here, if you'd like to adjust, feel free to cut the yeah. CDC. Mm -hmm. So this is a very efficient and uh, quick te technique, but can you use it for mayflies as well? Oh yes, of course. Um, it's a little bit different because a mayfly got an upwing. Yeah. And uh, what we have done is just a, a kind of classical mm -hmm. way of using the, the material. So let's go and, and make a mayfly. And actually I like very much that technique because once again it's pretty quick. We were mixed for that, the technique of using the CDC for the body yeah. and the technique of the magic tool for the wing. And this adjust the length. One of my favorite color will probably be kind of olive for the body. Yeah. The large majority of the ephemera mayflies are with the kind of olive body. Mm. 
we do have in Europe more than 400 species which got uh, that color for the body. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> That's a lot. So if you don't know, use, <laughs> use an olive one. The English people call it BVO, blue wings olive. So mm -hmm. this is a full, a big range of uh, insects. So um, let's go. The technique, twist and wrap the feather, including the, the stem, to get a nice conical body shape. Few wraps and we are ready. Now clean up the body. It's very nice conical. Yeah, and safe. Yeah. Because it's natural. You can't you can't be wrong with that because you use the natural conicity of the set. So let's see, for the wing, what are we going to use? A little bit of a leaf. Mm -hmm. We are going to use a little bit of grey, I mean blue done, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice as well. Yeah. And uh, we are going to use another natural uh, tashte, the smallest feather on the bottom, on top, and then use this table clip, flip in, mm -hmm. trim, transfer. And then throw them off the stems. Now use your needle to split the thread. So flat the thread first. And then you split the thread. You incorporate the ackle substitute here. And first spin a little bit in your fingers and spin the bobbin holder. forward and now very important if I do wrap like this I will have a polymer which actually yeah. is a kind of nice pattern as well but I'd like pretty much to have more material on top than on the bottom so, so look wings, at, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so uh, watch what I'm doing with this fingers I just bring all the fibers up each rod and that does that you have more material on top and less on the bottom. Yeah. So this is kind of nice. When you reach the end, keep all the material out of the way. Uh -huh. So you can keep a nice clean head. Easy to finish. And then trim here. I like it that way. Everything is up. Mm -hmm. Not everything, because in this method you cannot put 100% of the fibers on the top. So you still have to clean up under. But there is one thing I like very much using this technique, is you see that I'm trimming off something on the bottom, yeah. but it brings the legs effect ah, of yes. the insect. So you take something away and that brings something in. And uh, here you just have now to trim the lengths and shape, and here you go. Very nice. And this is quick. Yes. This is very quick. So let's come to the latest development. So how does it help you tying with the magic tool? Um, this is the stacker actually. This is this uh, little tool which goes very well with, uh, in combination with the magic tool. You, you have seen me collecting mm -hmm. the fibers yes. out of the stem and trying to pack them together to put the, make the wing or to put like uh, the post of a a parachute. Mm -hmm. This is not that easy and that tool helps you to pack everything together. That's the reason I call it stacker. Okay, That's so stacker. yeah it's kind of stacker. You can use it for fur, you can mm -hmm. use it for a, a hair, you can use it for CDC. So let, let, let me show you the basic idea of it. So you prepare a little bit of thread. The body will clean up 
Okay, now when you want to make a post, you have to take those uh, nice uh, fancy colors mm -hmm. and grab the fibers. And yeah. as you have seen, it's not so easy. So the idea is uh, to use one, two feathers. For that I will use the large table clip. And then the long scissors. And then collect everything like this. So nothing new so far. Yeah. So we trim up the stems. But using the second clip, what you can do here is to grab and change from one mm -hmm. clip to another. Mm -hmm. And now by using this tool, I will be able to pack everything like that. And so okay. it's easy to get everything nicely lined up that you can tie in one run. So the post of your parachute is very quickly made. So this is the purpose of that tool. Kind of nice. Very nice. Very quick. Again, a new step. So now let me finish this uh, pattern by using a couple of uh, CDC to make uh, the call again. So same technique. And trimming here. Mm -hmm. I like very much to use a little darker color for that. And then we split the thread, incorporate the, the echo, spin a little bit in your fingers. And now we'll use that to wrap around and to create the parachute itself. So mm -hmm. you go one time on the back, one time on the front, on the back, on the front, and on the back. And then you are done. Hmm. So it's pretty quick and easy. I need to finish Very it now. Quick, yeah. And as well, it is strong because instead of getting all around the post itself by going like a figure eight, yeah. you make everything much stronger. And as the post is not something which is dedicated to the fish, but for you, you can make it shorter by just taking all the fibers and just keeping that. So the, you are going to see this. Yeah. And the fish is going to see that. Yes. And it's quickly done. So you showed me now where CDC came from and uh, tied different patterns from different technologies. But uh, what is a good fly for you? That's a good question because it's not easy to make a good fly. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to choose the right component, but the right component should be strong enough to resist in certain circumstances. And it's kind of a combination of everything. It should be good looking, it should be in a way sexy for uh, the fish, mm -hmm. but it should be strong. Never forget that when you cast a fly, the speed in the curve can mm -hmm. be over 150 km per hour. Yeah. So it has to be strong. Yeah. It has to be aerodynamic for the same purpose. Mm -hmm. So when you use CDC, for instance, for the wings, uh, you see that the wings is going to collapse close yeah. to the body yeah and then come back up and secure a slow uh, yeah. landing on the water. So this is a good thing. Uh, it should be also in uh, the water, I'm mm -hmm. talking about nymph and, uh, and, and things like this, streamers mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not so easy to make a good fly. You always need to make 
kind of compromise. Should I make few wraps more to secure or it is going to be too heavy? And, and uh, no, it's not that easy. I would say I like very much CDC because uh, even if it is apparently soft, you know, when you, when you blow on it, you can see the wings moving, mm -hmm. but it is uh, when you fish, you can fish uh, like, I don't know, uh, two hours, three hours and, mm -hmm. and get 10 fish, your fly is still fishable. This material is just fabulous for a lot of different things and not only for dry fly but also for nymph and as well for streamers. I designed some uh, salmon flies and I can tell you when I started with that about mm. 20 years ago mm. there were some guys saying that I was getting crazy to use this because mm -hmm. it's not exactly in the tradition of fly fishing for salmon mm. I would say. And as well, when I, I first made my uh, nymph mm -hmm. uh, with CDC, uh, a guy in Belgium who were used to write articles said that I was really getting crazy to use this <laughs> fabulous material for nymph. But I think this guy did not uh, remember that when the very first pattern I have been tying, you, know, you remember this uh, mouche de valor yeah. and the moustique du jura, when those flies are wet, yeah. and you don't want to change them. Yeah. You can also fish it on the water. And as it, it is soft and, uh, and sweet, I mean, it really gives the illusion of life. Yeah. And this is also something which is very important. Yeah. I would say another point is uh, hmm, never use too much material. Mm. Uh, very often we, uh, when we start especially, we, we say, oh, it will be better if I put another... Mm. It's not what we, we want to have. Uh, we want to give the illusion of life, which yeah. is the movement, yeah. basically.